These researchers did a pretty interesting total synthesis of lysergic acid. The entire scheme is pretty long, so I'll only pick out some interesting bits, but they started from this bromoindole. They did a few modifications. Phosphorus oxychloride and dimethylformamide will formulate the ring in a Vilsmeyer type reaction. Then tosyl chloride, dimethylamine, pyridine, and triethylamine were used to protect the indole nitrogen as a tosylate. Sodium borohydride reduced the aldehyde to an alcohol, and that was displaced with bromine and triphenylphosphine to give this bromide. The bromide was then reacted with this diethyane. N-butyl lithium can deprotonate to give a carbanion which is stabilized by the two sulfurs and that's a good hard nucleophile to displace the bromide ion. This is an example of unpolung where the natural polarity of the reaction is reversed. The diethyane can be considered as a masked carbonyl group. Anyway, once the dithiane is attached, a few more modifications happen. N-chlorosuccinamide and silver nitrate were used to deprotect the dithiane. Sodium borohydride and cerium trichloride reduced the revealed ketone to an alcohol. Tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride was used to deprotect the DMS acetylene. Then finally, a reaction with this methyl propylate formed this species here. And then a few more modifications. Diosobutyl aluminium hydride was used to reduce the ester to an alcohol that was then protected with triisopropyl silyl chloride. This is where things start to get interesting because a Kleisen rearrangement was used to rearrange the molecule in this way. And it might be interesting to think about the stereochemistry of this rearrangement, so let's draw the orbital lobes that are involved in the reaction. We'll have the pi orbitals in both the double bond and the triple bond, and the orbitals of the sigma bond as well. This gives us an opportunity to practice the Woodward-Hoffman rules, which state that a ground state pericyclic change is symmetry allowed when the total number of 4q plus 2s and 4ra components is odd. And drawing the overlaps, we can see that we'll have a pair of pi 2s components, that is, they're supraphacial and react on the same side, and a sigma 2s component as well. And so the total number of 4q plus 2s components is odd, and so Woodward and Hoffman say that this is allowed by their rules. So with the bond coming out of this position here, that'll give this product after the Kleisen reaction, and you should be able to convince yourself that this is the stereochemistry of the product. But there's another possibility based on an alternative orbital overlap if we draw the lobes again, but this time overlap the lower part of the double bond with the upper part of the triple bond, then the overlaps will look something like this. It's not an entirely unreasonable conformation for the molecule to take, and now we have a pi 2a component, and a pi 2s component, and a sigma 2a component. This is still an odd number of 4q plus 2s components, so again Woodward and Hoffman's rules say that it's fine. And if we draw what the product is, this is the alternative diastereomer. In reality, the researchers were able to bias it towards the diastereomer they wanted by using this very strange-looking triphenylphosphine gold oxygen tetrafluoroborate. With the required diastereomer in hand, the next thing was to swap out the alcohol for a nitrogen. They used Mitsunobu conditions to swap out the alcohol group for this amino tosylate. And then, after that, comes the main step. Palladium tetrachis triphenylphosphine in dimethylformamide with potassium carbonate as the base uh, essentially forms the, in, the whole rest of the skeleton in one step, with reasonable diastereoselectivity. This is worth looking at in some detail, so the proposed mechanism is an oxidative insertion of palladium naught into the carbon-bromine bond, followed by an amidopalladation-like step, where there's some sort of concerted process happens with the protected nitrogen pushing electrons into one of the double bonds, which simultaneously coordinates to the palladium two. Hydrogen bromide is lost, you can see the palladium will lose its bromine ligand and the nitrogen loses a proton, and this forms a seven-membered palladio cycle, and then reductive elimination will stitch the two rings together, uh, palladium-2 will return to palladium-0, and the rest of the skeleton will have been formed. And most of the work has already been done now, it's just a few more functional group modifications. Tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride was used to deprotect the triisopropyl silyl group, the desmartin periodinane and sodium 5 chloride were used to oxidize the alcohol to an acid, and then trimethyl silyl diazomethane was used to esterify. The tosyl protecting groups were removed with naphthyl sodium, then a reductive amination with formaldehyde, which was reduced by sodium cyanoborohydride, methylated the appropriate nitrogen. Sodium cyanoborohydride is good for this because it's not active enough to reduce formaldehyde itself, it only reacts to the imine once it's been formed. Now actually at this point the researchers are working with a mixture of diastereomers, however the final step, sodium hydroxide to, to uh, hydrolyze the ester to an acid, also epimerizes the molecule to the more favorable isomer, and that completes the synthesis of lysergic acid.